Hello Internet, welcome to Alex Universe. So as you can see from the name of the video, we're talking about Turkey today, and more specifically, Istanbul. So as you can see, I dressed up for the occasion. Um, really apologize to anyone from Turkey for this probably really offensive attempt for Turkish look. So into today's video, guys. Uh, first of all, I will share with you uh, some general travel tips about Istanbul, how to get there, how to use the public transportation, and some general info about Turkey, and then I will get to some personal information that I remember from my visit in Istanbul, and I will end this video with the list of the most popular and the most amazing tourist attractions in the city, so let's go! So, first, some general information about Turkey. Turkey is located in Asia and Europe. Most of the territory is in the area called Asia Minor, and there is this uh, little piece of Turkey that's actually located in Europe. And just on the boundaries between Europe and Asia, you can find the city that we will talk about today, Istanbul. It's located on the Bosphorus Strait, which is one of the most important naval lines in the world. Now. The official language of Turkey is Turkish. There is the currency of Turkish lira, which uh, can be exchanged of uh, one euro for 5.5 lira or so. Um, they use the Type C plug outlet and uh, drive on the right side of the road. Now, one of the things that need mentioning is the so-called Turkish toilet, which is uh, basically this thing. While it was probably really popular in Turkey, which is one of the reasons why it's called that. Uh, right now, if you're accommodated in some hotel or even hostel in Istanbul and in major cities, you will get a standard Western light toilet. So let's get that out of the room right away. Yeah? Cool. Now getting to Turkey. Um, first of all, uh, many of the nations, including the citizens of the European Union and other Western countries, have a short-term visa-free access to Turkey. You will only need a passport that has a validity at least half a year after you leave Turkey. And in other cases, you just need to apply for the visa on the Turkish embassy or consulate. Now, there are two airports in Istanbul. Uh, not long ago, the original main airport for the city, the Atatürk International, was closed and now it was replaced with the new Istanbul airport, which will be your destination in most cases. Um, specifically if, if you arrive with any of the, let's say, normal or standard airlines like KLM, British or whatever, and also Turkish Airlines. As a brand new airport, this was actually uh, intended to be the kind of a hub for traveling from west to, e to the east, I mean like from Europe to Asia, Africa. Somehow like a new Dubai, let's say. Um, the second option is the Sabihagukchen um, airport, which is located on the Asian part of Istanbul. And this is usually served by the low-cost carriers. Most importantly, uh, that would be Pegasus, which is like the low-cost company of the Turkish Airlines. But other European low-cost companies are like Ryanair, Vizair, Flydair, and also I think Fly Dubai if you are like flying from the, from the east. Uh, both of these airports are served by the Havastas buses uh, that will take you to the main square of Taxi, which is like the center of the new Istanbul. And from there you can use the public transportation, which I will talk about a bit later. Now, other possibilities how to get uh, to Istanbul are of course by bus, and there are some train lines. Uh, you can get direct train from Thessaloniki in Greece, and also from Ankara which is the capital of Turkey, if you fly from the other direction, but I don't think it's very likely. And you can also arrive by car. But here's the thing, uh, Turkey is kind of infamous for its role in the so-called refugee crisis in, the Euro in um, Europe and in the European Union. And at the borders between Turkey and Greece, uh, there are usually very thorough controls. Remember that Greece is part of the Schengen area and, and check out my video about uh, crossing the external Schengen borders. It's really pain in the ass, so in case you want to drive, uh, just be prepared that the lines can be really 
long. Now let's talk about the public transportation in Istanbul. Uh, there are four metro lines, then you have four uh, tram lines. Uh, these are kind of cool because one of them will take you directly from Taksim to the historical part of Istanbul, where you will find basically most of the tourist attractions in the city. So that should be your go-to. And also while you drive it, uh, it drives along the coast and it's really picturesque and really scenic, so I really recommend I think it's number three. And uh, the rest of the city is basically served by buses. Now, uh, where to where to be accommodated if, if you if you want to uh, see Istanbul? Now, there are two possibilities where which I would recommend. Uh, first of all, just get accommodation on the European side of the of the city because on the Asian side um, there are not so many tourist attractions or many points of interest in general. So you want to be in the European part, and now. There are two possibilities. There is the older part, uh, located near the main tourist attractions, and then there is the new, newer part of Istanbul, which is located near the Taksim Square. Now, getting uh, from Taksim to uh, to the historical part, it's really like not that far away. It's like half an hour by foot. If you if you if you uh, go by tram, it's even quicker. But uh, from my personal experience, uh, it was amazing to live on the Sultan Ahmed Square, which is directly in the historical city center. You cannot get even more to the center than that. It's really cool and really amazing. And you just you just go out at night. Uh, there are there is this beautiful fountain in front of the Blue Mosque, and just it's really it's really alive there. But on the other hand. Uh, the surroundings of the Taksim Square are, like I said, the new part of the city. That's actually where like the young people in Istanbul live. And so if you're interested in some real nightlife, like bars, dance clubs, and something like that, uh, then I would really recommend you probably to end up near Taksim. But also, if you don't want to get bothered by the public transportation, uh, there is the possibility to get a taxi driver. But if you don't want to haggle with them. Like in my video about Morocco, uh, you can use uh, the services of the Karim, which is like the, let's say, Arabic slash Turkic version of Uber. And also you can use Uber itself, it's it's not banned in, in Turkey. But just remember, uh, the taxi drivers don't usually like these apps, so just don't call them in, near the main sites. So if you intend to travel by the public transportation, you will need a thing called Istanbul card. It's like this uh, contactless card where uh, you can upload some money and then you will use it to buy your tickets for the public transportation. You can buy one for uh, the deposit of 10 lira, which is not refundable. And if you buy it in the vending machines near the metro entrances, it's actually for, for only 6 lira if you want to save some money. And then you can upload some money on that and uh, you will just use them to buy to buy tickets for the Now, what can you actually do in Istanbul? There are plenty of things. Um, first of all, um, it's pretty much Western-like country, so if you're an alcohol addict or something, uh, you don't have to worry, it's not banned there, you can get beer almost everywhere. If you want to get the real Turkish vibe, uh, you should uh, visit one of these shisha bars, they're like everywhere. Uh, and so, Really cool experience, to my opinion. Also, if you have a chance, uh, I would really recommend you to visit Istanbul during Ramadan, just like this holy month for all Muslims. They cannot eat or drink uh, during the sunlight, which means uh, so once the sun starts to set, uh, all of these families are gathering on the public places uh, with their dinners and stuff and uh, waiting for the sun to set. And when it happens, um, that's, it has uh, such an amazing atmosphere. Uh, I was so lucky that we were there like, there, like during the Ramadan. It's amazing. It's an amazing cultural experience, really. I can really recommend it to you. Um, don't be worried. It's like um, even even if they don't drink or eat during the day, uh, they will not uh, ask you to do the same. So that's perfectly okay if, if, if you want. That. Uh, eating in Istanbul. Uh, of course, you can you can get to some um, you can get to some restaurants, uh, but uh, 
what you can really what you really find on almost every corner are these kebab houses you know that if you live in Europe we have them everywhere but they originated in Turkey so uh, if you are a fan of kebab get it in Istanbul it's a perfect thing and another place where you can actually get something really specific it's the Golata bridge uh, where you can see all these fishermen that are uh, fishing for fish that sounded weird okay uh, and uh, then they're selling like these fish sandwiches or whatever really cool in case you're a vegetarian, there are also a lot of vendors on the street that are selling uh, baked corn and that's also very tasty, I can really recommend, I survived like 4 days on it, really cool. Uh, one other thing that you should try when you're in Istanbul or in Turkey in general is to get a Turkish coffee. I mean, for me, <laughs> it's not exactly something that I enjoy, I'm more of a like Italian style coffee, but if you're ever there, uh, it could be a really cool experience. And also, uh, I wanted to show you my beautiful, my beautiful mug that I got in Istanbul. And now let's talk about the tourist attractions. So probably the most popular one is uh, the Hagia Sophia. Originally, the Church of uh, the Divine Wisdom. Today, uh, it's a museum, but. Originally was built as a Christian church, then it was rebuilt into a mosque and now, like I said, it doesn't serve anywhere. And like the cool thing about it is actually it looks like a mosque from, from the outside. You have like four minarets around. The dome structure is amazing. You may get inside and there is a lot of Islamic art there, but also you can see some old uh, Byzantine frescoes there. And it serves like the great bridge between uh, the Orthodox Christians and, and the Muslims. Another great thing is the Topkapi Palace. Uh, there are like four courtyards that are surrounded by uh, these amazing old quarters of uh, the Ottoman Sultans. Before I get any further, uh, let me mention one thing. Uh, you can get this thing called Museum Pass. Uh, which will actually uh, give you access to many of the tourist attractions but at least these two, I mean Hagia Sophia and uh, Topkapi Palace and if you buy it then you have free access to all these uh, to, to these two main uh, sites and also get you gain access to many other many other um, museums in the city like archaeological museum and, and, and others so and it's valid for five days, so I believe if you're there for a longer time, and even if you are not, if you want to go to both of these main attractions, it's already good for you to get this museum pass. So I believe that's kind of an, kind of kind of interesting to mention. Uh, you can you can actually buy it uh, in the Hagia Sophia, and then it's valid for Topkapi and other all these museums. Kind of useful if, if you want to see the doll. Uh, another thing is just across the square from Hagia Sophia and the Istanbul Mosque, or also called Sultan Ahmed Mosque. Uh, that's probably one of the most beautiful pieces of Islamic architecture in Istanbul. Uh, the entrance fee is for free, and you can say that about all of the mosques in Istanbul, so you can visit most of them if you are dressed appropriately. If you're coming to the Sultan Ahmed Mosque, actually, uh, you cannot go directly to the part that is reserved for the pray, uh, for the praying people but you get to the visitor entrance and if, if you if you if you dress accordingly which means uh, your knees are not visible or your shoulders um, then then you you're okay if you have ever been in a mosque then you know what I mean you also have to take off your shoes when you get inside but that's kind of understandable um, just don't forget, it's a it's a working mosque, so there are people who are praying, so don't be a dick. That's just a good advice for any time of the day. Um, another thing that I would really recommend you to visit is the Grand Bazaar. There's also the Bazaar of Spices. Uh, you should visit these if you want to see some kind of a, these uh, old medinas. Uh, as, as, as you, if you've ever been in an Arabic city, you know what it looks like. There are a lot of these vendors uh, that are selling sometimes souvenirs, sometimes some old trinkets or stuff. Uh, in the Spice Bazaar they, they sell spices and stuff. 
it's really cool. Uh, the Grand Bazaar is actually uh, completely under the roof, so even if the weather isn't very good, it's a perfect uh, it's a perfect spot for you to get. And if you want to get some nice souvenir from Istanbul, this could be the place for you. But on the other hand, don't forget, this is one of the main tourist attractions in Istanbul, so it will be much more pricier than if you go to some unknown but the architecture of the bazaar is really amazing and even if you don't want to buy anything there i would really recommend you go to come there another amazing thing that doesn't really uh, appear in many uh, top 10 list for istanbul is the dome bahçe palace it's located a little bit further from the city center but uh, you can get there by, by the tram and it's completely stunning so you know, if you if you visit the Topkapi Palace, the original house, um, the original seat of the sultans, uh, you will you will wonder, okay, but the the Ottoman Empire ended in like in 19, 1920. Uh, how is it possible? Th did they really live like this? Because it looks really medieval. And the answer is, well, kind of, yeah. Uh, but in the beginning of the 19th century, the sultans built a new palace for themselves. So just, that's the Domobahce Palace. From the outside, and in many cases also uh, from the inside, it looks like the European palaces, like if you've been to Versailles or Buckingham Palace or something, it looks like an uh, aristocratic seat from, from the 9th century from Europe. And it also has this amazing um, Islamic uh, vibe to it. Uh, you can find the harem there. There are actually like two uh, tours you can buy. Okay, there are the state rooms and there is the harem which harem was uh, for uh, the sultan and his family like his wives and mother and uh, basically this his like family and the state rooms uh, they were used for him to meet with other people uh, i would really recommend you to go to at least the state rooms because uh, i don't want to spoil anything it's forbidden to take pictures of it so uh, you will not see it here in this video but the ending of this tour is absolutely amazing. It's like the most beautiful room I've ever seen in my entire life, and I really, you should, you should really go there. Now, another thing that uh, you should visit—it's not really that far from uh, Sultan Ahmed, and that's the Basilica Cistern. As you can probably see, uh, Istanbul is not located on any kind of a river. So when it served as the capital for the Byzantine Empire and later for the Ottoman Empire, it really needed to have some storage of water. And that's exactly what this basilica system is. It was built during the Roman times and its original purpose was to store water for, for the whole city. And today it's like this amazing dome structure underground where I cannot even grasp the enormity of the place. It's really cool. The acoustics are amazing. It's a little bit wet and a little bit dark, but still really good experience. So uh, really worth visiting. Another thing uh, when we're talking about uh, the Roman times, the Teleresian walls of the city, they're actually not original. Uh, they have been uh, restored later. But these are these are the replicas of the original Roman walls of Constantinople, which is the original name of, of Istanbul. And guys, if you, if you want, if, if you're ever interested in, in any kind of um, medieval warfare, this is a must for you to see because these walls haven't been breached until until the 15th century. So really, really worth visiting. Another thing, uh, like I already said, uh, there is this Galata bridge where you can see all these uh, fishermen. I can grab something to eat. Really cool place. As you cross uh, the Galata bridge across the Golden Horn, uh, you will get uh, to the newer part of Istanbul. No, you are no longer in the old Roman Constantinople, and you can find there Galata Tower, which will provide you kind of a nice uh sides of the city but uh to me actually it was kind of a disappointment so uh suit yourself if if, if you're a fan of of uh towers and of viewpoints could be interesting but uh for me it wasn't really worth the wait because there was like a lo long line for, of people so but if you're in for a longer time definitely definitely go there and one last thing uh if you have the time, and even if you don't, then you should do that. 
There are plenty of cruises that will take you to the Bosphorus and uh, you can see the city from uh, from the seaside. And that's also amazing because uh, you will get a glimpse of the two bridges that are actually connecting the two parts of the city. And in extension Europe and Asia, which is also just always cool. Uh, you get a glimpse of, of many palaces that are uh, built along the coast and uh, some of the mosques and you can get the idea of the cityscape of, of Istanbul. It's really cool. Uh, some of them are quite uh, quite uh, expensive, but if, if you are near the Galata Bridge, uh, search for this guy that's always like screaming there, Bosphorus, Bosphorus, Bosphorus. Uh, they're very, they have very affordable uh, cruises. They take like two hours, um, and they will really take you along the whole Bosphorus from both sides, Asian and European. It's very really cool, and um, I really enjoy that. I really enjoy that trip. I recommended for everyone. So that's Istanbul. Uh, for me it's one of the most amazing cities in the world. That's why I began this series with this with this uh, beauty. Uh, you know when you visit uh, Istanbul it's like this amazing crossroad between between the east and the west. Uh, you can see the Roman influences there. Uh, no wonder that was called New Rome uh, when it was part of the Roman Empire. Um, also, there are many of the Islamic vibes in the city. Uh, you can see the old Medina there, you can, you can uh, get a glimpse at the amazing Islamic architecture and art in the, cities, uh, in the city and in the streets and uh, all of the mosques are really amazing. You can actually see that they look a little bit different from all the mosques in the Arabic world and um, like the whole vibe of the city is so amazing. I cannot really tell you how much I loved my stay there and I hope I will visit again soon. So I really hope that you found this video interesting. If you have any more thoughts, uh, give them to the comments below. I will try to respond to them. If you have any questions, ask. And if you found this video interesting, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, check out my other social media some other videos. I have some other tourist guides here, so if you're interested in traveling, it could be really cool, and I see you in the next episode. Have a great day.